We are ready to go. It's a tiny little noodle. This is a nice one. It's a beer crate. But I think this is very key. Or if we realize we have to go to another solution. It's of course frustrating. We're here at Marin uh, today, uh, and for the few weeks we're doing basin testing. And this gives us the unique opportunity to, in a controlled environment, understand how the system interacts with plastics, with waves, and in an offshore environment a lot happens, and it's the most realistic environment, but it's also difficult to observe in detail what happens. And when we're here at Marin, we can simulate at scale the offshore environment, yet we can far closely and better monitor how plastics interact with the system and how that can help us improve the system there. Look at, look at that one, look at the, how deep is it, is it coming, you see? Good. We've proven the concept as far as this is the best way to collect plastic from the ocean, but now we're seeing if we can do it better. We were always doing the engineering and operations at the same time, you know, with the same size team. So now we can all really focus on engineering and improving offshore operations, improving every single thing that we do out there from when we collect the plastic and bring it on board. So this, this part is improving the system, but there's also like every team is working on improving their efficiency of what we've been doing for the last three years. The main focus of the test, which is the funny part, is the tiny little noodle floating on the top of the water. And that's, our, that's a representation of a section of the system that we use in the GPGP. So we have, as you can see, a mix of what usually is collected in the Great Pacific garbage patch. These are ghost nets and we try to represent them as best as possible uh, with what we find offshore. So this is in scale 1 to 10, so if this is like 20 centimeters, this is going to be 2 meters in, uh, in real scale. Because we have a limited basin, even if it's big, but uh, we cannot put a 2.2 kilometer system in here, so we have to do everything in scale. Together with that, we have uh, 3D printed plastics that try to resemble as best what we have offshore as well. So we can go from barrels to canisters to smaller like oil tanks. Uh, this is a nice one. It's a beer crate. We found things like this, so it's not uh, fantasy. It's all real. Yes, it's this one. So this is the filament we use. It changes the properties based on the temperature we extrude. Um, and the way it changes its properties, there is a foam inside this filament which expands. It activate is activated at a certain certain temperature. You cannot really see the foam, but mm. it's inside. Trust me. And then you can play with this expansion to change the density and. Uh, and that's, that was our goal, we wanted to print a range of plastics that resembles the best, as best as possible the, the plastic we find in the ocean. There we are, it's ready to go. The main goal of this test is to see when underflow happens because that we cannot observe offshore. We also get the benefit of having controlled situations with changes in the wing to see overtopping, so when things go when plastic goes over the wing or under the wing. This one went, this one went. Every certain time we change a condition. Either we change uh, the wave condition or we change the model configuration. We cannot do that in the GPGP. We do have some cameras there, but we cannot be constantly following the trajectories of the plastic close to the wing. 
and that's uh, the gain uh, from the test. Of course, uh, we would like to be all the time there, out there in the GPGP to continue the cleanup. Excellent. Um, <laughs> but I think this is very key, very important because we want to clean, but in an efficient way. This year we're not in the patch operating, but ultimately this year is very much about realizing these performance improvements. What we saw last year offshore is we definitely see that the increase in performance would benefit a lot from operating those areas of high density plastic. Next to that, when we did the post-processing of the data, we actually see we can also improve in the retention efficiency. So what we're doing is we're researching uh, the two uh, parameters you could say. So one is making sure that everything we encounter offshore we harvest effectively. That's what the retention efficiency test is about here. And secondly we're looking that when we are offshore we operate in those areas of high density plastic so we most effectively sail through the Great Pacific Garbage Patch. And that latter part is related to the drone scope we're doing in combination with AI technology. So we are in uh, beautiful Buffels Bay in South Africa. Uh, we're here testing unmanned aerial vehicles, so a drone. What we're interested in doing in the future is using these drones to look ahead of the vessels that we have in the Great Pacific Garbage Patch to scan the sea surface looking for areas of high density plastic. So the idea is then that we can steer the cleaning system towards those areas to really enhance the catch that we get on a particular day. Uh, and we're also building on the ADIS technology that we use. Uh, ADIS is a, a static camera which fixes to the size of the vessels that we use for uh, System 2 and System 3 and is now rolling out to other vessels around the world as well. So this test is basically a ground truthing exercise. We've used these drones in operations and we've obtained some useful data, but now we want to see with varying different weather conditions, what is the impact on the AI detection of plastic. Today we've uh, got a window of weather where we can get more uh, samples deployed out in the uh, test location. So that's uh, critical for us to have uh, a nice sample density. Uh, so when the drone's doing its uh, flights, we have a representative uh, example of what's out there in the Great Pacific Garbage Patch. So in the preparations of the tests, uh, we've deployed 90 pieces of plastic in a 9 by 9 uh, square kilometer. And after uh, this plastic has been deployed, we, uh, we recorded the exact GPS locations. And then afterwards, we're, uh, what we're doing now are the flight days. We have a selection of sensors that we're testing. Uh, we're testing our uh, in-house uh, ADIS payload that has been developed to detect plastic. On top of it, we're also using a high-resolution uh, visible light camera. And we're also testing some uh, infrared sensors, both in the short wave and in the long wave, to figure out if we can detect plastic also overnight. For our technological development, this test is quite pivotal because if we're able to implement uh, drones in our mission, then we expect to be uh, catching a lot more and a lot faster. So uh, it is true that by not being in the water this year, we're pausing temporarily our operations, but this is in the hope of reaching that technological stretch that is going to allow us to perform much better in the future. So now in the coming weeks in the office, we'll thoroughly analyze this data. And after that, we're going to make a conclusion if we can go ahead with incorporating drones in our operation or if we realize we have to go to another solution. Initiatives like this are incredibly important. Our ability to detect plastic and steer towards it is one of the big, big performance drivers that we have. And when we get these results and we incorporate them into our strategy going forward, it's just going to really make sure that once we are back, in operation in the GPGP, we're leveled up and we're better than we've ever been. So knowing that the Great Pacific Garbage Patch is out there, it's still out there, doing all this harm, while us having a technology that can clean it today is, uh, is of course frustrating. Uh, I wish we'd be out there right now with 10 systems clearing this up. But uh, at the same time, I also know it's, uh, it is the right thing to do now to, to take a bit more time to, um, you know, to get that hotspot hunting and the system efficiency uh, where it can be. 
because um, you know, that will enable us to, to secure the funding, to secure the operational support we need to, uh, you know, to completely clear this up in a, in a matter of years. So I cannot wait for us to be out there again um, and collecting much, much more plastic than we've ever done before.